Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, are you Alex? I'm such a big fan, oh my god. <laughs> Right then Shine Real Life, welcome back to another video. Today I am in London because today I'm heading to the Tavistock Centre. Now I do understand that some of you may be like, Hannah you were here last week, what are you doing this time? Well today I'm interviewing even more staff for the Tavistock. And I have finally arrived. Usually when I'm interviewing people at the Tavistock, they are at an entry level. However, this time they were not at an entry level. This was interviewing doctors that already worked inside of Tavistock and their entire system and wanted to just go to the next level. And as per usual, I absolutely love doing it and Tavistock has such a wonderful organisation to work with. And with another workday over, it's time to carry on with the theme of my recent videos, which is audio, if you hadn't noticed. And with that, we're heading to St. John's Wood. No spoilers there. <laughs> Where I'm going in London is probably one of the most well-known crossroads in London. Why did the lighting have to go then? <laughs> right now I'm over here and I need to be over there at Abbey Road. It might not look much, but this crosswalk right here inspired millions and millions of people. Now the reason that this crosswalk behind me inspired so many people is that there was a smallish band, I don't know, Bug, Ladybug, Beatles, I don't know, maybe something like Beatles, I, I, pff, I don't know. Well, you know, just they took a photo and it was an album cover and, well, the music on their album literally saved lives, but you know, it's, you, they're just a small band, you know. But with all jokes aside, if you don't know who the Beatles are, it, it, it doesn't matter, you've, you've just missed out on some great music, but that doesn't matter. Some names that you may recognise is Jodie Whittaker and David Tennant, they play some of the Doctors in Doctor Who. Well recently they crossed this walkway to head to a place just down here. And by the looks of things, they take security really seriously. But let me introduce you to Abbey Rhodes Studio. And by the looks of things, someone's done some pretty awesome artwork along the bottom here. And if any of you come to Abbey Rhodes and walk this crossroad, you'll know that I did it too. And by no way am I comparing myself to the Beatles. I could never be as good as them. Tomorrow. Now I haven't been to Ashurst for a very long time on this YouTube channel. I'm pretty sure the last time that I came here was in 2017. What I do know for definite though, I've never vlogged walking down here ever, so that's a first. Now I don't know about you, but I think this view is pretty amazing. Now the reason that I have come to Ashurst today is because I am actually featuring in someone else's podcast and that's someone else is CAMS. CAMS being the Child and Adolescence Mental Health Service and yeah they reached out to me to talk about trans stuff as far as I'm aware. I am so excited. I'm eating hair. <laughs> Swallowing hair is my favourite pastime. I'm joking by the way. And I have finally arrived. Also you might recognise this building. I was in a short film for CAMS and I was filmed outside of this. One hour later. Now the question that y'all are probably asking is, Hannah, when does this podcast come out? When can we listen to you on a podcast? Um, early December. Should be early December. But if you want to know exactly when, um, um, follow me on Twitter, Hannah Phillips R, and on Facebook, Hannah Phillips Real, and on Instagram, Hannah Phillips Real as well. And I know I'm probably repeating myself, but I had so much fun. The lady was so lovely. She was so nice. But right now I have got 30 minutes until my train arrived at this station. Uh, I should have brought a coat. I, I am regretting the decision not to bring a coat. If you know me, I really hate coats. And I know I'm gonna get questions about how deserted this station is. Well, usually on the vlog we go to like Waterloo Station and all those fancy stations in London. This, this is what the majority of forest stations look like. They're quite peaceful, quite, quite empty. Yeah. And well, if I come up onto the bridge, 
Look at that view. Oh my gosh, it's incredible. But I ain't gonna lie, it's, it's pretty cold out here, so I'll see y'all back in the studio. Yes, I did that transition a couple of days ago, but who cares? Also, I'm wearing a top that I wore. Uh, any, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter. And yes, this is another thing in relation to audio. The thing that is so special about this cable is that it's not as long as my other cables. The cable that I have at the moment is this yellow cable that goes all the way around there, or down there, around there, and all the way down here, and all the way around down here, all the way past this awkward lighting and down here. And then it would plug into the microphone, which is about this sort of height and about here. No one needs that amount of cable. Uh, uh, but, but, but I, 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 I do. Now that yellow cable is in fact 10 meters and well, it's only really practical if I need it 10 meters away. However, it still would work at like this sort of distance or two meters or five meters, it would still work. However, it's not practical. This green cable, well, it's only two meters. Now you might recognize this angle from my two minutes trans topic Thursday videos. Well, um, if I put one end of the cable on top of the camera like that, and well, I get the other end of the cable and put it in my audio interface over there. Well, that is two meters. And well, if I had a 10 meter yellow cable from here to there, um, there would be a lot of cable that was just on my desk. Yeah, that, that's really just the only downside. Now, just like when I bought the 77D, I compared it to the M50 in a blind test. So the other day I was thinking, why don't I compare this microphone to the microphone that I use for all of my computer related stuff. Now, I do not want you to tell me which one you think is which. I want you to tell me which one is better. I hope you can do that for me. This is Microphone A. Rise and shine, real lights. Welcome back to another video. This is Microphone B. Rise and shine, real lights. Welcome back to another video. This is Microphone A. Rise and shine, real lights. Welcome back to another video. This is Microphone B. Rise and shine, real lights. Welcome back to another video. Now, as you probably can agree on, both of these microphones don't sound that bad. Just because one of these microphones is better than the other doesn't necessarily mean that one of them is worse than the other. Even though this microphone was twice the price of this microphone, they both have different use cases. Both of these microphones can be used on cameras, both of them can be used for filmmaking, both of them can be used for voiceovers. This one requires phantom power, whereas this one has a rechargeable battery inside of it. This one is much longer, and this one, well, it's a lot more chubby than this one. And a lot of the people that I talk to via my computer, I think this is a really good microphone. And a lot of my friends who are camera people, even my parents, think that this is a beautiful sounding microphone. I personally cannot say that one is better than the other, nor can I say that one is worse than the other because I use them for two different things. But nothing really matters, so let me say it one more time. Did you prefer microphone A? or microphone B. Now tonight I am in fact heading out to the town or city or whatever you want to call it of Southampton because today it's a sad day it's November 20th and for those who do not know it is Transgender Day of Remembrance also known as Tidor. Yeah. But before I arrive at the location in Southampton you peeps need to know about what took place just a few days ago. Uh. Today I am heading to Reading, however this morning I met up with some friends for a late breakfast. You probably remember them from the video that I made in 2017 about a really expensive milkshake. Now I probably should explain why I'm on a bus, well basically in short, trains not working. Wheels on the train go round and round, round and round, round and round. The wheels on the train go round, round, round. I'm so bored. Hey. 
Welcome to Reading Station. Just look at that view. Oh wow. And after what feels like a lifetime of journeys, I'm finally here in Reading. And oh my gosh, this place is amazing. The station, best I've ever seen. Amazing station. But all I have to do now is find the hotel I'm meant to go to. One eternity later. I finally arrived at the Penta Hotel, Reading. Hello, I'm here for an event with my umbrella. Oh, how lovely to meet you, Hannah. So let me explain why I have traveled like 75 miles to come to Reading just for one day. If you are familiar with my Pride vlogs, you would know that there is a company called My Umbrella that I absolutely adore. Well, today they are holding a vigil for Transgender Day of Remembrance. Now, My Umbrella is part of Reading Pride, so I'll leave some links down below for My Umbrella and Reading Pride. But let us not forget that the people who have lost their lives and had their lives taken from them in the years before this are less important than the ones who have been killed this year. What an event that was. It was so powerful, so moving, and so inspirational. The amount of solidarity in just one room was incredible. I loved it, even though I did shed a tear or two. I would like to say a quick thank you to everyone at Reading Pride and my umbrella. It was a fabulous event. Meanwhile... And now you have caught up with everything that I've been up to, I finally arrived at a fountain that you can barely see because the lighting's great in the middle of a park. <laughs> 